Hello, it's me, Surya, your favourite sewing friend. And if you come here from my pattern review of the Stacker Jacket by Paper Cut Patterns, welcome. If you have just randomly stumbled across this vlog about sewing, also welcome. But today's vlog is an adventure in how I made this jacket. So I'm just warning you right now that this vlog is very detailed and it talks in great depth and goes through a lot of the instructions of how to make this jacket um, and what process I went through. Um, so if you're interested in that, please continue watching. If you are not interested in that, uh, I don't know, just skip to bits that you think look remotely interesting. But yes, again, warning, very detailed. It took me two weeks to make this jacket because I decided to make a twirl first, so a sample of the jacket just to check fit and all those types of things, any modifications that I needed to make. And I was making it out of this uh, like plant print fabric that I got from Vinnie's. I got a massive roll of this for like $10, it was great. I bought it for the pure purpose of making samples. So I was making it out of that and things were going pretty well, I would say. Also, if you see pattern pieces, which don't look anything like the pattern pieces that you have in terms of the type of paper that I'm using, it's because I like to get my patterns that I have and then highlight my size and then trace them out onto other pieces of paper. Uh, just so that I can preserve the main pattern as my master pattern in case, you know, on the chance that I would either get fatter or thinner, then I can just go back to this master and trace out a new size. So yeah, because if not, then I would have cut into it and then lost all those sizes. I mean, I could print it out again, but you know, laziness. Anyway, like I was saying, it was really good to make a toile first to check the fit and sizing of the jacket. It was also really good to practice, like have a first round practice of like making the jacket from scratch to see, you know, where my pain points were, what I could do to not replicate that in my proper fabric. So I just definitely needed a lot of practice because it's the first time that I was making a jacket that is fully lined or in fact just making a jacket full stop. So I spent a couple of days working on the sample and the making of the jacket uh, was pretty straightforward. Um, everything just kind of fell into place, except when I got to the point of attaching the lining hem to the main fabric hem, um, and that was, yes, a bit of a struggle for me. Good morning, it is Saturday. I have spent last night finishing off the sample of my jacket. Um, I spent so long trying to figure out how to attach the um, lining to the bottom half of the main fabric, and I sewed it together like three times. I pulled it apart and then put it back together and again and again and again. Um, but I, yeah, managed to figure it out. So hopefully now when I buy the real fabric, which I'm gonna do today and start working on that, it's not going to be so bad. And then after that, I spent ages like trying to figure out whether I should lengthen the sleeves or not. Like an enormous amount of time just like looking at my sleeves, looking at my arms, like thinking about whether I should lengthen the sleeves. Like the sleeves are maybe a little bit short. Uh, actually, no, they seem to fit. I don't know, what do you think? Should I lengthen the sleeves maybe? Hmm. In the end, I did lengthen the sleeves because, you know, no one wants to walk around with like slightly cropped looking sleeves. So it's not like a real crop. It's just like weirdly short. So to lengthen the sleeves, all you need to do is measure how much you need to lengthen it by. On your sleeve pattern, there will be a line which says lengthen or shorten here. Cut through that line, split apart the two pieces to add the extra centimeters you need. And to make sure it's lined up properly, just draw a line straight down the middle of the sleeve and onto your extra paper. Use that line as a guide when splitting the two sections. And then once you've spaced it out, to the extra length that you need, tape it down onto your extra paper and blend in the side seam lines. Et voila, new length in sleeve pattern. So after lengthening the sleeves, I felt like I needed to have side pockets because it felt really weird not having a place to put my hands in to like side pockets. I just really like them. Well, um, I'm used to having jackets that have pockets. So like this no pocket situation is not the greatest. I used one of my existing jackets as a model for where to put the welt pockets and then I watched this very good YouTube tutorial on welt pockets which I will leave in the description box below. I drafted up the pocket bag, the welt pocket placement, uh, the welt pocket placement on the main fabric piece and the welt pocket opening. I think that's what it's called. Okay, so I've drafted 
what appears to be some form of inseam pocket. I think it's a welt pocket actually. Here's the pocket piece. Can't really see it because the lighting is bad, I'm sorry. Um, I've sort of outlined where the pocket should go. It kind of crosses over with the other pocket, but it's fine. Um, and then I've got the welt pocket piece here. So I was initially going to just like cut into my good fabric and make it up as I went and like a crazy person. But this time round, I'm going to do it right and try it with the actual test fabric that I have and uh, cut into my jacket, test jacket, um, and see how that goes. So hopefully if whatever it is that I made makes sense, it should work. And if it doesn't, then eh. But uh, yeah, let's give it a shot and then I will let you know how it goes. And then also somewhere in between drafting the welt pockets and messing around with the jacket, I went to Spotlight and picked out some fabric and notions for the real thing. Hello, it is Saturday and I have finally cut out the good material for my jacket. So here it all is, all nice and cut out. As you can see, the lining is that pink and the main fabric is a that cream cord. And I cut out all my fusings, so I'm going to have to iron those. Basically, I did some mods to the um, jacket. I lengthened the sleeves and I also added in a, like a flat felled pocket. That's what it's called. Like a side seam pocket, flat felled one that I saw a tutorial on, uh, on YouTube about how to do one. So I added that to the pattern. So this is the sample. Like obviously I should have um, tried to experiment with the side pocket, not when I had constructed pretty much the whole thing, but you know, it was a last minute decision. So it's done. And then I only put one pocket on the side. So now it's got like the front pocket. Ah, I stuffed this up. Ugh. Um, front pockets on either side, the chest, and then you've got your side seam pocket. So, it feels weird not having another one here, but anyway, it's just an example. The only thing that I have to do with this is, or the sample, is to put button holes on here. And you know how much I hate buttons because my machine is not automatic. I'd have to do it manually, so... I'm going to construct the original, I'm going to construct the main, my new jacket with my good fabric and then I'll finish it and then once I get to the point where I need to do buttons, I will experiment on this one. So wish me luck. Okay, so the first step is to get all your pattern pieces that have um, fusings and iron those on. So I'm going to do that. Okay, everything is pressed um, in terms of fusings. And now to make the inseam pocket on the front breast, like front panels. So, so I've got my two notches marked out here and here like it says on the pattern between there and there you want to put your pocket bag so right sides facing put it against here you want to mark your stitch lines actually okay so I've attached the inseam pocket to the front right sides facing I've marked out where we are going to stitch in this little rectangle thing here if you can see and I did it also to the other side so both sides so we're going to stitch here Okay, so now that um, I've stitched this together, just want to clip into the corners here so that when we flip it over, it um, sits nicely. 
So I'm just going to do that. So this is what it should look like now once you've clipped it and turned it right sides out. Um, so it doesn't say to press it in the instructions, but I'm just going to give it a press anyway to make it stay like that. Okay, so now that we've pressed it all nice so it sits good, um, we're going to fold, we're going to fold this up. Fold this up like this to make the pocket bag stitch down the sides on either side. Okay, because we're doing pockets right now, I thought I'd do my flat felled pocket on the side. I think that's what it's called. Oh uh, yeah, my pocket on the side, I thought I'd just do that now. So I've gone ahead and traced out the pocket placing. You can see this is where the pocket placement will go um, on the front. So I've done one on here and one in here, exactly how I've put it based on my pattern. And so now I need to sew in the flat flat felled section. What is it? This little thing. So I put fusing on this. I'm gonna fold it in half and then we're gonna sew it onto one edge of this. Okay, I figured out. Well, I remember what it's called now. It's called a welt pocket, sorry. <laughs> um, so this part here will stick on like this. So what I'm gonna do is get this, fold it in half. It will stick on to here and be like a little cover. It'll make sense once I start doing it. Like, let's just um, fold this in half and sew it first. I've gone ahead and pressed these together, right sides facing, and now I'm just going to sew down the sides and then cut the corners and then flip them out. Um, so we're going to do that. Okay, so now that I've sewed this together, I'm just going to trim half of this, the seams, so it's a bit more narrow, and then on this corner here, because you're going to fold it out, you want it to be nice and good, so I'm just going to trim a little corners, and then do this for the other side as well. Now that we've done that, you can flip it out. And it's nice and flat. So you've got like a nice um, welt pocket opening thingy. We'll do this for the other one and then I'll give it a press because it's sort of um, wanting to not stay open. Okay, so now that I've turned these out and I've pressed them, I need to sew and close this off down the raw edge. So I'm going to sew that with a one centimeter seam allowance, both of them shut, and then I'll come back to you. <laughs> okay, so now that I've cleaned up the edges, I've sewed together the opening, and it looks like this now. So on our piece here, we want this raw edge to be facing towards the center front, which is here. This is the side seam. So we're going to stick this onto your markings like so. Okay, so stopping right there, I'm just saying that everything that I'm saying right now is completely wrong. But I went ahead with it anyway, until the point where I started putting in the pocket bags and realized that I had definitely put in those welt pocket openings 
the wrong way. Ugh, so I made a boo-boo. All right. So I've gone and put the welt pocket thingy on wrong. <sighs> this is the side seam. The raw edge of this is meant to be facing the side seam and I've gone and put it backwards and I've also done that for the other one too. So I need to unpick that now and flip it onto this side. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that now. Okay, take two. I finally ripped them all out and put them back to where they are meant to be. So let me just show you again. So this is your front facing piece. This is the side seam. This is the center front. Your welt pocket closure thingy has to have the raw edge facing the side seam. Sew it into place. And then here with the pocket, we're going to put the first pocket on top, matching up the markings. And then we're going to sew down on the line that is furthest, closest to the center front. And then after that, we're going to push this aside, put down this second pocket and sew onto the line that is closest to the side seam. Okay, let's do this again. Also, side note, if you decide to make these welt pockets, don't forget to add some fusible interfacing on the wrong side of the front bodice where the pocket will go. It just gives it more stability when you cut into it later to open up the pocket. I have successfully put on this pocket to the front facing, uh, the front bodice. So as mentioned, I stuffed up and I put this little welt thingy on that side instead of this side. It's on the right side now. So just be mindful, this little welt thingy, the raw ends have to face towards the side seam, which is this one. Center front is here. So therefore the raw edge is on facing towards the side seam. And then after that, you put this on top, you sew down this line that is closest to the center front. And then now that I've done that, we push that aside so that it looks like this and see how this is got another line. You get this pocket, the other pocket, you put it here and you line it up so that this line is on the outside. So do that and we sew down on the line that is closest to the side seam. And then after that, once you do that, you would split this down the middle. There is a seam, there's a line here in the center. We would cut through that and like smush these pockets through to the other side. And that is how you make a pocket opening. So I'm gonna do that now. So now's the moment of truth. All we have to do is um, cut down the middle where my markings are, which I feel like I've done them a little bit off or I've sewed them in kind of off, so. Anyway, let's see how this goes. And then now that you've got your opening, which you get these and you shove it onto the inside. And then, once they're on the inside, you can sew around this pocket bag. Okay, 
I have finished the welt pockets. I would say that it looks quite bad, but still functional. <laughs> so here it is um, on this side and this side. So it's turned out kind of gross. Um, it's a little bit budged, obviously my measurements and whatnot were not super perfect and didn't really turn out very good on this particular fabric, but looked okay on my sample jacket because it is so crazy that you can't see or tell uh, when it's bad, I guess. But this is uh, less forgiving. So honestly, I don't really mind that it's a bit gross. I kind of don't understand how I could redo it without unpicking the entire thing. Also, I marked this with tailless chalk and I'm really hoping that this washes out. I'm sure it does, but it just looks really weird having yellow marks everywhere, but the pockets work, look. And it has pink lining inside. So yeah, sort of there, sort of not really. I mean, let's just put it together and see how it looks. If it looks terrible, um, I'll probably still wear it outside. So all good. <laughs> So now that I've done the belt pockets, I'm going to start working on the, the front yoke, I think it is. Yeah, the yoke and the little flappy bits that go on top of this um, inseam pocket on the front. Um, yeah, we'll see how much I get done today. Constructing the front yoke and the back yoke was very straightforward. There were no real mishaps here, so I spent the rest of the night working on that without any problems. I think I also had sliding doors on in the background. I've been going through like watching all the 90s rom-coms, so you know, everything that Gwyneth Paltrow has been in, <laughs> everything that uh, Julia Roberts has also been in, very nostalgic and also comforting while I was sewing this jacket. Hi, hello. It is Monday, it's a public holiday here. I spent, not yesterday, but the day before in the evening trying to finish off parts of the jacket. So this is what I've done so far. So after <laughs> out the debacle that was putting in these welt pockets, they are extremely uneven. Um, I went ahead and then started to attach the back to the front. So I just sewed in the shoulder seam and then the side seams. And so now I'm trying to fiddle around with this and put in the sleeves. Sleeves are the most tricky part of this. I, in my sample that I made, uh, <laughs> uh, mucked it up. So my sleeves were really wonky and they're very ugly. So I have to be extremely careful this time around. It doesn't say anywhere in the instructions to like, normally you would run a base stitch between like two notches on the sleeve head and then sort of like gather them a bit to kind of smush them into the opening sleeve armhole, the armhole of the jacket or top or whatever you're working on. But this, these instructions didn't say to do that. So. I, tr I did the gathering technique on this one, like my sample, because I just assumed that that's what you did, but it did not say that in the instructions, but I did it anyway, and that's maybe why it turned out looking really weird. So I'm just going to not do that on this real one and see how it turns out. If it turns out bad, I'll probably have to unpick it and do it again, but, you know, the, the things we do to get something to work nicely. I mean, there are lots of mistakes that I make that I can overlook, but sleeves going in and having like weird bunched shoulders and stuff because you've done it wrong looks pretty bad. So I'm going to make sure that I try to do it well. So wish me luck in my quest for good sleeves. So as you can see, I have pinned all the way around the sleeve, the armhole and stuck the sleeve in. So this is the jacket is inside out and then right sides facing like you shove the sleeve inside and right sides facing you pin it in although do I do it right um, 
No, I did not. Okay, well that's good that I checked because I did it wrong. So I pinned it in <sighs> wrong. So now I have to take this out again. Hooray. Success! So I put together the sleeves very slowly and carefully. So obviously, you know, you got the sleeves, this is the right side, so on the inside, I'm gonna put it around here, right sides facing, and make sure you line up all the notches, and then you should be good. It's interesting because the sleeve seam needs to line up to the back yoke seam and then like then the notches kind of line up around it so yeah it's different like normally I would put the sleeve seam to line up with the side seam but in this case it's the sleeve 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 seam lining up with the back yoke seam and then all your notches should fall into place if you've put them in, which I didn't, then I had to mark them again. And yeah, then it'll turn out fine and you don't need to do any uh, basting stitches or anything. You just have to go around it real slow, which is what I did. So now that's together. And now it's time to put the lining on. Yeah. Oh wait, no. First is to do the collar. Do the collar and then do the lining. So you've got your under colour, you want to right sides facing, pin together and sew down the seam, press open and then we will stick that onto the other colour. So now we're going to get our under collar and get our collar right sides facing, stick it on and then sew all the way around. Okay, so now that that's done, I have put together the collar and then I base stitched the bottom edge to keep it together. Um, and now I'm going to attach it to the bodice, which is very exciting. And then once I've done that, we can do the lining, which when I first did it was a nightmare. But now that I've done it once, it should be okay. Where does this go? What? Where are my pins? Oh, there they are. So I've laid out the jacket as per what is appearing in the instructions. As per the instructions, so this is the back sleeves. This is where the lining attaches to. So here, on this pattern piece, you can see this notch is the fold line this notch is where the end of the collar should be. So here, where I've snipped it, that's where the collar should line up. There, and then all the way around here to the other side where I snipped it. So, I'm just gonna pin this from the notch to the other notch, like so. Right, so now the colour's all pinned, we just sew along here. It says to just baste it in place with a 5mm seam allowance, so I'm just going to do that. And I assume like, you know, you baste it and then when you touch the lining, you sew it in properly, so 
Yes. I'm gonna get this lining and stick it onto this part, including this thing. Right, so we wanna pin this lining from the bottom edge here in this corner. Ignore this part here because that's gonna fold upwards or fold upwards like that. And then you pin it all the way to this neck facing, the end of the neck facing. All pinned. It's gonna sew along. Okay, so it says to stop one centimeter before the end of the lining on the bottom half. So, um, centimeter, I'll just make a mark. So now that the lining has been put together, it's looking pretty cool. The lining. The only thing that's kind of bad about picking this pink lining is that the pink kind of shows through onto the other side. So this like beige-ish color is now going to be like a pinkish beige-ish color. Eh, you know, it's not too bad. But yes, I don't know if you can see it in this lighting, but it, like, the pink kind of shows through. But anyway, um, now we have to construct the back lining and stick it onto this front lining. The thing that got me about the back lining is that they have instructions about making a pleat on this side, but it doesn't have any notches. And this is where I accuse paper cut patterns of not putting in notches, which is 100% not true. Their patterns are perfect. Uh, but it's just me forgetting, because obviously I trace off all my patterns off the main pattern and forgot to put in a notch and was convinced that it was paper cut patterns fault and not actually my fault. So I'm very sorry, paper cut patterns. You guys are the bestest. I'm going to double check again the original pattern, but there's no notch. Like, I'm pretty sure there's no notch on there, so let's have a look. Oh no, wait, I take that back. There is a there is a notch. My bad. Three centimeters from the fold. Three centimeters from the fold. Right, let us correct this pattern. Three centimeters from the fold. Where is my pencil? So just ignore all that I've said. Obviously paper cut patterns is very good and I just did not check it properly. So this is the fold. So you wanna stitch three centimeters from the fold and 2.5 centimeters down. I'm gonna make a notch. All right, well, I'm gonna go and sew that now. Ah, I almost forgot, you're meant to once you've sewn the front lining on, you're meant to trim the seams and then press the seams towards the facing? Yes, I'm pretty sure. Wait. Trim seam allowance, press seam allowance towards the... Okay, no. Press seam allowance towards the lining. So trim the seams, press seam allowance towards the lining. So I'm going to do that because, you know, everything looks nicer when you press stuff and trim things. So I'm going to do that. Also... I did the pleat. So this is what the back pleat looks like. I pressed it. It's a bit um, dark, but yes. Yay. Okay, trimming, pressing. Okay, all pressed and stuff. So I'm now covered in lint and threads. But we're going to stick the back lining to the front lining. So, hmm, okay. So this is 
the jacket inside out and we're going to get our back piece and line up the shoulder seams and the side seam together right sides together so you just want to flip this out and then right sides together pin this shoulder seam together and then this side seam do the same on the other side and then you're going to sew the shoulder and the side seam together and then leave a gap in one of the side seams of about 20 centimeters so like this this much gap unsewed yes so let's pin this sleeves. Right, so I've sewn the back to the front lining. Shoulders and side seams, press them open. Left a 20 centimeter gap on one side of the seam and now we're going to sew together the sleeve linings um, and shove them into the lining and then sew them on. So now we're pretty much on the home stretch. Sort of. I've just realized that like I could probably finish this tonight and then <laughs> the last one that I have to worry about really is trying to put buttons on them and make buttonholes which I dread so mm, yes anyway this is your sleeve piece pretty much the same exactly the same as what you would do with the fabric sleeve so right sides facing Fold in half, down the seam, pin and sew, and then we will shove it into the lining and sew the sleeve head into the armhole of the lining. Yay! On his cable show, his assistant. Apparently it's the highest rated show on the channel. Well, apart from the one, you know, with fat people who up their relatives and the squeeze. <laughs> Okay, so I've sewed in the sleeves of the lining. And now I'm going to sandwich the we're gonna close up the neck area of the jacket by smooshing in the collar and then putting the lining on top of that and sewing that together and when you like flip it inside out it'll be all sewn together so this is what it looks like this is the jacket inside out the lining the collar is here you want to stick the collar inside and then put the lining on top and just sew all the way down and then so that's the easy part the hard part is then <laughs> This hem bit, I f don't, I'm getting very confused as to, I've done this before and I still think I did it wrong. So now I don't know, like, do I just sew it like this and then flip it up or do I flip it up first? And then anyway, I'm gonna relook at the instructions and read it like 50 times over. Okay, so I've done the collar, um, and now I've just pinned the hem, I think I figured out what it is, like you just put the hem of the lining against the hem of the facing, right sides together, and just sew, pretty sure, and then this, you leave off like one centimeter from the edge, uh, before you finish it, like just one centimeter from the ends, and then we grab the excess hole and just sew Yes, okay, um 
Hmm. Well, I'm going to I'm going to do what it is that I failed to tell you what I'm going to do. Um <laughs> So, wait, let me just... <sighs> okay, so as you can see, I have sewn the lining to the front. I mean, the lining to the front-facing fabric all the way along. And then here, because you're meant to stop one centimeter from the end, which is what I did here. Then you've got this weird gap thing. They want you to essentially grab from the centimeter mark that you stopped sewing at and just put it together with this end here. Make sure you tuck in the lining, put it together at that edge. Again, making sure the lining's in from this edge to that corner and then just sew down straight across. So then when you turn it out, this should be a nice corner of the jacket. So in the bottom section, the front facing with the center front. So there should be, you know, corners should be nice. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to do that. I already did it to the other side, but then I stuffed up this one because I didn't pull the lining in enough to sew it down and then it was poking out and all weird. So I'm just going to make sure this lining is tucked in. Yeah, so it. Okay, moment of truth. I'm going to flip it out through the, um, the little hole that I have. So this is the 20 centimeter hole I have and we just have to flip it right sides out so just pull the entire thing out through the hole cool quite like it obviously I've made some boo-boos already I can see <laughs> my modification my measurements obviously wrong even though I did it on a sample like why am I so dumb anyway firstly these pockets are like really like puffy these little flaps but there's no instructions to say to top stitch them so I think I will top stitch it just to make it sit a bit more flat and less like puffy like they really stick out maybe it's just, I think it's just the fabric but it just makes it worse so I'm gonna try and top stitch around the edges to make it sit a bit more flat also where I put the pockets it's kind of really low and I forget that this is a crop style so there's meant to be top stitching that goes all the way around which is like I think it's like five wait. It's like three or four centimeters in width this top this this band of um, top stitching around yeah it's like four centimeters so <laughs> with the width between the pocket like bottom and here is like what three and a half so I think I will do four centimeters and just like make it really weird and sort of like go around and then stop here at the pocket and then go around again. It's gonna look pretty strange, but I think like a wider top stitching band hem thing would be better than like a narrow one because it looks a bit strange. And also it would match when you top stitch around this part. So, ah, <sighs> fail, but good news is, is that you can't really tell it's pink underneath with the lining and the lining looks bomb so you know it's a plus this, this is a plus this is 
good in a way because I have a pocket but also bad because I didn't measure it out properly but also even if I moved it up a little I feel like I'd be like eh, like putting it in really high it's just I can see now why this was not like a feature in this jacket like obviously it measured up a bit weird so if you ever want to do this just make note that like the band is gonna be a bit weird so yeah and this is like puffy and uh, I have to figure out how to do buttons but other than that I still like it and it's a good color and I will wear it outside so yay for me uh, Right, now to figure out this uh, top stitching. Hmm. Okay, so this is the jacket. I top stitched the little flappy bits so they're less um, puffy. I'm considering top stitching the collar as well to make that less puffy. And then I did some <laughs> top stitching on here. You can see that it's not very good here, but and then I did top stitching on the cuffs. I sewed in the lining, sewed up that gap, and sewed the lining into the sleeve. So it's looking pretty crumpled, just ignore that. <laughs> just have to give it a good press. So I'm currently now working on a way to do the buttons. Normally you would just use your machine, uh, your sewing machine, and do like an automatic buttonhole or some sort of buttonhole using the machine, which I am uncomfortable doing because I definitely every single time stuff it up. So I'm going to do hand sewn buttonholes. And to do that, I'm just going to first try on my sample. So I've marked out, you know, where the buttonhole should be. I'm just going to test out on one and how big it should be based on the button that I have. Whoops. So there's a two and a half centimeter wide button and then you add on one eighth of an inch on top of that. So it's like what 0 0.3 centimeters and then another like depending on how thick the button is. This is like two millimeters. So I added on that um, and so the buttonhole length should be three centimeters so I'm gonna do that hand sew it and see if it works and then if it works I'm going to transfer it to that and then we should be done hmm, seems to fit let us sew this up by hand. Hello. So my quest for uh, perfect handmade buttonholes, well hand sewn buttonholes, is going rather badly. So they look really mangled. Look at that. What is that? Deary me. It is... So I made that and I was like, oh, that's ugly. And then I made another one. I was like, oh, even uglier. Okay. I'm going to now try to spend the evening experimenting with my machine to make buttonholes. I really don't want to, but I'm going to try it because these buttonholes are rubbish. And hopefully machine buttonholes, if I figure out how to do it, because it is rather manual, will turn out less bad. Uh, okay, so I feel kind of happy, but also really dumb. Um, so I forgot that the machine that I'm using is not the same machine that I used to have ages ago, where the buttonholes were terrible and you had to do it manually and like flick to one and then another and then whatever. It was just a lot of steps to do buttonholes. But this machine actually has like a little buttonhole foot so do you know me? And you just put the button in the foot and then it just makes the buttonhole. It's not like super automatic like the ones that I've seen where it's more of like a computerized sewing machine, but it still works. So I made, after watching a tutorial, I actually figured out how to do it. So I'll link that in the description box below. But look, I made a 
ignore all my mistakes. Um, I made a sort of buttonhole, this one. And it looks a lot neater than my handmade buttonholes. So I just need to practice a bit more before I do it on the real thing. But yeah, I'm really excited. So I'll show you the buttonhole thing. The buttonhole. Buttonhole foot. So this is the buttonhole foot. It's got like a little gauge here where you can put your button so it gives you the perfect size buttonhole for the button that you've got. So I've gone and put that button in there. And then, yeah, you pretty much just like open that up, put the button and then stick it onto here. And then um, I was kind of confused because it wasn't like going back and forth like it was meant to, so I was like, oh, am I missing something? And then after watching the tutorial, I realized you have to actually put this little button, like, stopper, like button foot stopper thingy, so it knows where to stop. It's going back and forth. Yeah, and it works, and I'm so excited. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to uh, making more buttonholes as a practice run. It's very exciting. I have conquered my buttonhole fear. And it only took, uh, you know, trying out the buttonhole part of my machine to figure that out, so... Well, these buttonholes are much nicer now. Look at this one. Oh, it's so nice. And this one, also very nice. So I went over it twice. Um, each time you go over, you need to, like, reset it again. Um, but yeah, I think I'm ready to actually do real buttonholes now on actual jacket. First I have to give that a press though because it's kind of really crumpled. But yeah, home stretch, yay! So excited! Buttons! Buttonholes! Okay, buttonholes are marked. Buttonholes are marked here and here. Moment of truth. Okay, I have a problem. So, I think it's the corduroy. It's not very smooth. It's a little bit rough and, I don't know, sticky as a surface for these buttonholes because the buttonhole uh, foot needs to like glide up and down and the corduroy is not letting it glide up and down so it's just kind of like being stuck there so i was like really freaked out so now my first buttonhole is uh really not so good um uh, i also went over it twice so now it's kind of mangled but i found a solution all you have to do is if you're finding obviously i should have done a test run on this fabric but i was like too excited and i thought it would work <sighs> all you have to do is First, test the fabric with the buttonhole first to make sure that it actually slides up and down and works. Secondly, if it doesn't work and it doesn't slide up and down because your fabric's too, I don't know, sticky or something, like the pile is just too much for the buttonhole slider, then you just put some tearaway interfacing. So this is tearaway V-Lane. V-Lane. And you just put it on top and it acts as like a nicer, smoother guide. And as you can see, it has made a buttonhole without me, you know, having to push it around. It just does it by itself because it glides around nice and smooth. So yeah, my first buttonhole is mangled. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but um, it's obviously very faint. But I went over it twice and now it's pretty mangled looking here and I'm scared to go down again but in the event that I tear this um, but yeah I'm gonna go and place um, some tear away on the other ones to make sure that it slides through this one I will have to salvage somehow I don't know how but wish me luck Buttonholes are done. Now just to tear away this. I still sort of had to feed it through a little. Um, but generally it worked. The first
first buttonhole is a mess, but these buttonholes are much better. Nice buttonholes. And then this one I sort of salvaged. Sort of. Okay, now to slice them open carefully. So I just want to say right now, and this is like, you know, a little community warning to you, uh, please don't slice your buttonholes like I am right now where my fingers are right in the way of slicing the buttonholes. Like, I didn't even know what I was doing. Like, I'm lucky that like my, you know, rotary cutter is kind of blunt because if I had slipped and just like went like forward by accident, I will slice my hand off. So just make sure when you're like slicing through your buttonholes to like keep your hands out of the way, you know, slice away from you, not into your hands. Oh my gosh, it's done. Yay. So I put in the buttonholes. Um, I think I need to put some fray trick on here to make sure it doesn't continue fraying. And they look okay. First buttonhole up here is a little bit um, gross, but like the rest of the buttonholes look pretty decent. And then I put in the buttons. Yay, so happy. And that is the end of the vlog. I know, it's very lengthy, but if you have managed to actually watch it in its entirety, I, you know, kudos to you because it was very detailed, but very good if you wanted to know the exact process of constructing a jacket. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and also I hope you learnt something from it and how to not do certain things or to do certain things. Uh, yeah, don't make my mistakes. Hmm. I hope this has helped you, yes. So if you enjoyed this vlog and you want to see more adventures in sewing, uh, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!